What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the importance of the thumb. The thumb plays an important role for those who are one-handed, but also plays a role for those who are two-handed. I'm going to break this into a two-part video, but before I get into the two parts, I want you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. As I said, the thumb plays an important role. Part one of the video, we're going to be talking about proper fit, proper feel, and how you should be actually using your thumb as a one-handed bowler. In part two, we are going to be talking about using the thumb as more of a directional aiming piece as well. So part two is going to be important for both one-handers and two-handers. So if you are a two-hander, feel free to watch the rest of this video, but if you want to, go ahead and skip to part two. But if you're a one-hander, stay tuned for this particular video. All right, guys, talking about a proper fit and feel for the thumb for one-handed bowlers. One of the most important things that we're trying to accomplish when we are throwing the ball is having a nice relaxed swing. So that is being relaxed in your hand, relaxed in your wrist and arm. We don't want to be tight, we don't want to muscle it. A lot of guys that I see that are trying to hook the ball are actually really cupping the wrist and elbow and keeping everything nice and tight and trying to really hook the ball. And the more you try to hook the ball, the harder it becomes. And if you can become more relaxed, learn how to have that effort at the very end, flicking that wrist at the very end, you're going to have more success and getting a higher rev rate, getting more power on the ball. So that's what we want to try to achieve. And you can't achieve that if you don't have a proper fit on the ball. So what I want to talk about first is, this is a, a big thing for a lot of beginners. Also can be helpful for some of you who maybe have bowled for a long time. But when we talk about the thumb, if you're using an alley ball and it does not fit you properly, chances are that thumb is going to be way too big. And if it's too big, you're going to have to end up squeezing the ball. When you squeeze the ball, you're actually taking your thumb, bending it in, and you're actually pointing it at the ball along with your fingers. So we don't want to be squeezing at the ball. So what can we do to relax it so that we aren't squeezing the ball? Well, if the thumb is too big, let's take this ball here that currently does not have one of my interchangeable thumbs in it. So the thumb is gigantic, right? So if this is too big and I wanted to try to grab this ball, I can, I can grab the ball, I can pick it up, but I have to squeeze in order to hold on to the ball, especially when I get in that swing. Once it comes comes back, if I'm not squeezing, that ball is going to fly off my hand. So too big of a thumb hole is going to require you to squeeze the ball. So what is actually the proper fit? How snug should a thumb be? And this is a tip that I share with all of my kids, and it is something that I don't think enough people really talk about. If you are rubbing on the back side of your thumb, which a lot of people do, there's a good chance you are bending that thumb and you are squeezing it. And what's doing is by bending that thumb as you're coming out, it's rubbing along the back of the ball. Now you can put that thumb tape on the back of your hand, that helps alleviate that. Although the real reason for wearing that thumb tape should be less about protecting the back of your thumb and more so about as you're releasing the ball, having it help glide off your thumb a little bit faster so that you can get harder lift with your fingers. So using thumb tape solely for the purposes of protecting your thumb, a better way to go is to try to change how you're actually gripping the ball. So what should it feel like? I'm gonna take my first Vice thumb insert, which by the way, thank you Vice uh, for creating some of the best interchangeable thumbs. I'm gonna take this particular, this black thumb is actually a properly fitting thumb hole for me. Okay, so I'm gonna insert this into the ball. Now, with that thumb insert in the ball, what I want you to do to see if you've got the proper fit is to start by just putting your thumb in and back out, okay? You're gonna feel slight little suction in there, but for the most part, your thumb can come in and out of the ball without a problem. If it sticks and you really have to pull it to get the ball out, thumb is too tight, okay? Obviously, if you have a large thumb like this, another ball that doesn't have the insert in, obviously you can come in and out of that with no problem. So it's not just about that. But now what I want you to do is I want you to take your palm or your fingers, I don't want you to put them in the ball, I want you to lay your palm flat on the ball. Put your thumb in, lay your palm flat. And then what you're gonna do is instead of bending your thumb and squeezing at it, we're going to try to hinge, instead of hinging here at the knuckle, we are gonna try to hinge here and push in this way with the thumb. So this is what I want. I don't wanna see this. I don't want you to feel this with the ball. I want you to feel this with the ball. You're gonna feel more pressure up here than you are anywhere else on your thumb. So put your thumb in. Lay your hand flat on the ball. Do not put your fingers on the ball. And then press this way, this way with the thumb, and you should be able to pick the ball up no problem, okay? That ball has no danger of coming off of my hand. Nice and easy. Ball actually feels pretty light. I want to show you 
what that compares to. This thumb insert is my larger one for when my hand swells. So it's a little bit bigger of an insert. So I put this in this different ball and I do the same thing. Put it in there, hand flat on, hinge at that part of the thumb. I can still pick the ball up, but I can feel this, feel that it's pulling away from the backside a little bit. It feels heavier because I actually have to squeeze a little bit harder here and with my hand to try to hang on to the ball. It's not quite as easy. And in fact, I feel like if I jerk really hard down, the ball will fall off my hand. Whereas this one, put my thumb in there, hinge at that part of the thumb. Don't squeeze too hard, just a nice light pressure with that part of the thumb, pick it up and I can drop down and that ball's not gonna come out, okay? But all I have to do is lightly let go and the thumb falls right off my hand, okay? So that's what we're trying to achieve is that sort of fit where it feels snug enough that you can do this, but not so snug that it won't fall off your hand as soon as you let go with your thumb. So if that thumb feels good and you're picking that ball up without a problem, one of the things you can work on now is on that particular release to make sure that thumb feels good by again, putting your thumb in there. Don't put your fingers on the ball. Just lay your hand flat and apply that pressure, hinging that part of your thumb to create that little bit of suction so that you're holding onto the ball. And what you can do is as you swing, just swing back and forth, that ball does not feel at all like it's gonna fall off my hand. And you're not trying to hook the ball, you're not trying to crank the ball, just swing it back. And then release with the thumb, ball comes off nicely. If I try that same thing with this pink thumb, which is my bigger thumb, I can put my thumb in there, I can do this, and I can swing back and forth, but this really feels like it's going to fall off my hand. I feel like I'm really having to squeeze hard to hang on to it. So yes, technically, I can still do that, but that ball really felt like it just fell off my hand at the bottom. So again, grab the ball that you think fits properly, thumb in there, do not hinge at the knuckle, hinge right here at the base of the thumb, hinge, fall, palm face down, and then hold that ball, swing it nicely. Feels like it's not gonna fall off your hand. Now if it sticks, if you do this and it sticks to your thumb, it's too tight. But if you can hang on to it a decent amount and let go of that ball, the thumb feels pretty good. One of the other major reasons why we wanna have a thumb that fits properly is because it also has to do, we talked earlier about how you wanna create a relaxed throw. It is very difficult for you to actually lift on that ball if the thumb does not fit properly. So for example, when you get somebody who grabs an alley ball who you know is a beginning bowler, especially somebody who maybe isn't very strong, I, I, I uncover this a lot with the girls that I coach in high school, is that their hand is back this way. So their wrist is not flat, it's not cupped, it's actually back this way. And that, even if it's flat up here, when they push away and they come down here, their hand, their wrist is broken backwards and that's how they throw it. You're not gonna get a lot of revolutions on the ball doing that. What I ask a lot of those people to do is trying to flatten the wrist, but a lot of them are not strong enough because what they try to do is when their hand is down like this, let me move back a little bit, when their hand is down like this and I tell them to flatten it, they're trying to lift with their fingers. So they are actually trying to almost curl the ball like you're doing curls, wrist curls, which is easy with this ball because this is a nine pound ball. But if I grab this 15 pound ball and I were to flatten my wrist, let it hang down, and I tell myself to curl up and let it flatten, if I use my finger to try to curl, that is difficult. And in fact, I don't know if you noticed, but I actually have a tendency to bend my elbow a little bit because if I try to keep my elbow straight and bend the wrist, that is very, very difficult to do. Probably a good workout for your forearms, but it is not what you want to accomplish because even if you were to start like here, as soon as you push away, it's so hard to maintain that, your wrist can break back. And if it breaks back, and you need to then bring it back forward as you're coming through the ball, it's very difficult to do. So how do we accomplish getting more of that flat wrist? It's not about lifting with the fingers, it's actually about pulling back with the thumb. So if you put your thumb in the ball, hinge right here, fingers in, thumb in, and hinge at that spot. Okay, now, let me move back again. Now, instead of trying to lift with your fingers, let's hinge more at the fingers, pull back with your thumb, okay? Pulling back with your thumb, that's easy. This feels like I'm lifting a lot of weight because the center of gravity is outside that center point. Here, I'm keeping the ball as a center point. The ball is not actually moving. I'm using my thumb to pull back by pressing that thumb down the way we are. Not pinching it, not grabbing it, but flattening it down and pulling in this way. You can more easily achieve that cupped position. So if that's what we're going for, this now 
feels like the ball's not nearly as heavy and I can now swing this without a problem and it does not feel nearly as heavy. So anybody who is struggling with being able to keep their wrist flat is probably because you're trying to curl it as opposed to having a properly fit thumb. If your thumb fits properly and you are pressing it that way, you should be able to accomplish getting that. That also allows you, as you relax your wrist, as you come up back in your backswing, and you need to bring it back forward, it's a lot easier, instead of trying to bring your fingers forward, pulling your thumb back as you're coming through, and then all you have to do, release that thumb, the ball will start to roll off your hand, and then you lift through the fingers and you get that rotation. So, so that's the best way that you can achieve a properly fitting thumb. That's how you can tell if the thumb fits you properly. Again, if that ball is falling off your hand, if you can't pick the ball up the way I just showed without your fingers on the ball, the ball may be too loose, it's not coming off your thumb, it's too tight. If you put a little bit more tape in the ball, if you take your thumb hole and you can't do that and you put more tape in it and you go to throw a ball and it sticks to your thumb, chances are it's because you're actually bending your thumb and you're now squeezing it. and when you squeeze and bend your thumb by bending your thumb you actually need more room in the ball for your thumb to pass so by adding tape if you're sticking in the ball it's not because a thumb hole necessarily is too tight it's probably because you're squeezing the ball you need to work on flattening that thumb flattening it and letting go with a flat keeping it flat the whole way so practice without your fingers in the ball practice that release and see how that feels and if it's coming off nicely there it should be able to come off nicely when you're throwing the ball with your fingers in the, as well if you're letting go of the thumb in the proper away. So hopefully this tip helped you out. Remember to check out part two where we're going to be talking about the importance of the thumb for both one-handers and two-handers when we're talking about aiming and directional rotation of your hand. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'll see you at the next video.